Hey guys, what's up? This is going to be the start of our reishi grow series. I had a subscriber request that I show how I grow my reishi. So we're going to get that rolling today. I got you guys outside on the patio right now because I feel bad. I'm making all these uh, videos down in the basement and it's like horrible lighting down there. The lighting so much better outside, but uh, it doesn't seem to matter how much lighting I take down there. It's just like, it seems like a dungeon, but uh, anyway, it's a basement. So it is what it is. And uh, I'm going to get some reishi rolling today. I have eight sawdust bags, hardwood fuel pellet bags already uh, pasteurized, cooling down, down in the basement, ready to go. And I have my four jars of reishi spawn on wheat that we made in our grain spawn hack video. And it's fully colonized, looks beautiful, ready to go. So if you guys haven't seen those videos, if you're new to the channel, um, I have a grain spawn hack video. And I also have a pasteurized fuel pellet tech video. And those will explain some of the steps I'm going to show you in this video today. I'm not going to explain them over and over and over again. You guys can just jump over and watch those videos. If you have any questions, you can also hit me up in comments. The strain I'm growing is from Field and Forest Products. It's a beautiful reishi strain, Ganoderma lucidum. At one point, I had an awesome uh, bluet strain, Lapista nuda. And I called them up and I actually sent them my Bluet strain and they sent me some other strains in exchange. So that's where I got it. And uh, it's beautiful. It'll do anything you want it to do. It's good on grain, uh, colonizes quickly, makes beautiful reishi mushrooms. Reishi is one of those mushrooms that you can manipulate their growth with uh, how much fresh air you give them. Quite a few different mushroom species are like that. And uh, if you kind of starve them for fresh air, which is what I'm going to do, they form what are called antlers. And uh, the antlers are kind of like coral-like structures that grow like fingers coming up out of the block. They look really cool. With the antlers, you don't get spores or a uh, hymenophore surface, which um, that can be desirable because that removes some of the bitter taste of the reishi. Uh, reishi is used medicinally, so people are making tea and tinctures out of it. And somebody, some people find the um, bitter flavor of the spores in the hymenophore surface, that's where it mostly is. Um, they find the bitter flavor really off-putting. So if you grow the antler form, it'll be less bitter. And so it's desirable from that standpoint, but uh, you don't get the, uh, the medicinal benefits from the spores. Uh, some people are looking actually to, to get the spores in their product. Um, some reishi farms actually just farm the spores and sell them separately. So, if you want spores, um, you're going to have to give your reishi more fresh air. And if you do that, um, they'll flatten out into a nice conch. And uh, if you want to know how to do that, check out my turkey tail video for a uh, simple humidity chamber setup that'll give them a little more fresh air and get them to conch out for you. But uh, I'm just going to do a simple monotub setup and uh, that'll, that'll grow us some nice antlers. So uh, we're going to head down into the basement and we'll get rolling well if you made it to this part of the video that means you survived my long-winded outdoor diatribe there on the patio so congratulations you are to the action part of the video and these are our four jars of spawn that we made in the grain spawn hack video again this is uh, Ganoderma lucidum on wheat and these jars each one of these jars has about three pounds of spawn in it and uh, so we're gonna take one jar, spawn it to two bags. And uh, that's the plan here. So obviously we're gonna do eight bags total. Uh, we have eight bags of our pasteurized hardwood fuel pellets. We're working in front of the flow hood. Um, again, as I've mentioned before, the flow hood is not absolutely necessary for this pasteurization process. I do know people that just uh, do it in a nice clean room with a clean surface area and do get away with it just fine. I have a flow hood, I use it all the time, and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to just cut the, the clasp on our zip tie here and that's gonna allow us to uh, remove our Tyvek. And once we're spawned up here, I'm gonna move the bags over to here where our impulse sealer is and we'll go ahead and seal them up and set them aside and once we have all of our bags spawned then I'll go ahead and shake them up and uh, I am working in front of the flow hood but obviously this is the impulse sealer is way out here and uh, so this is far from like perfect sterile technique 
but uh, this is the magic of this pasteurization process. You really don't have to have perfect sterile technique. Uh, again, I'm just working in my basement here. This is not a clean room. Um, you know, I have, I'm sure I have mold hanging out down here somewhere and uh, try and keep it clean. But uh, that's one reason this process works so great. Pretty much anybody can do it in their home or their basement or whatever. So I'm gonna set you guys up and uh, you can watch me spawn up a couple blocks and we'll go through the process. Squeezing the bags, listening for leaks. If there's any leaks, you'll hear it. If they're good, shake them up.
That is it. All right, this is my last bag. And uh, actually shaking sawdust bags is pretty good cardio too. So that's a bonus. But uh, just got a wire shelving unit here. And it's right under a window. I just put a piece of a box there to black out the light a little bit. A lot of people think mushrooms need to be in total darkness to colonize. That's not true at all. Just low ambient light is fine. Uh, you just don't want any direct light on them. And uh, they'll colonize just fine. So I'm just trying to keep it a little shaded there. And we're good. You want just want to make sure you space them out. There's some space between every block because uh, the mycelium will produce a good amount of heat as it uh, starts to digest the sawdust and move through the block. So uh, make sure you have them spaced out. And uh, these will sit right here and should colonize nicely. And uh, we'll come back with part two once they're all ready to go.